Okay, so on Instagram lately, I put up a post asking if you guys wanted me to do a specific look or a makeup tutorial. For this makeup tutorial today, I did take an hour and a half and that is just only for eyes. So I decided to skip my whole face makeup and I know that my face makeup looks absolutely amazing and that I would love to show you guys. But if you guys want to know what I did or the products that I used, definitely check out my Instagram because I always list it down below. Uh, apart from that, today's tutorial is based on like pinky tones and stuff because I kind of like experimented with other colors on the weekend and I kind of wanted to come away from all the vibrant colors. So pink today is on my tutorial list and I hope that I detailed enough for you guys what I did with the cut crease and the blending and the applying or the application of certain things but um yes that is what today's tutorial is going to be about just an eye tutorial and tying everything together with my lips and what I use for that. But like I mentioned, if you want to check out the products that I use for my face, I always, always, always have the picture of my makeup look and the products listed down below. And keep me posted on what you guys would love to see next. Quickly moving on to the tutorial. Before I do get there, I do want to give a huge shout out to my mum. If you guys can't see what I'm wearing at the moment, I got this out at dinner last night, which would have been either the 10th, I think, of November. But um, it's real gold, 13 carats, I think it's 13 carats, 14 carats, I'm not sure, but she she's a jewelry, the jewelry guru in the family while I'm like the makeup. But I really love this necklace. Uh, the fact that it's real and I never have to take it off for like have that green stuff around my neck is absolutely amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you to my amazing, beautiful mum and I'm seeing her this afternoon because I'm going on a makeup shopping spree. Yes, I'm gonna quickly jump to this tutorial before I get off topic, but I hope that you guys enjoy this. I hope that I've shown you enough to grasp if you wanna do this look yourself and if you definitely like it, like, subscribe and share and check out my links below for the whole face product thing. And I'll see you in the next segment, bye. Alright, so the first thing that I'm going to jump straight into, and I'm going to skip this because a lot of you guys have seen my brow tutorial. The only difference is, and I want to keep this clear, is I've actually got a new technique, um, the whole new look, so it's no longer like really, really harsh brows. I don't know if you guys have checked out my Instagram, which is linked below here. I would say that to my favorite brow routine at the moment is feathering brows. So it's where it's filled in, where it's natural, but it's not overly drawn and like harshly like filled in. So if you want to check that out, definitely head to my Instagram, as I said, linked below. I'm going to go ahead and do my brows and then come right back. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to apply a concealer to my lid and then I just blend it out with a Real Techniques color correcting brush. These kind of brushes are the best brushes to blend any kind of concealers out only because they're specified to do so. Um, I haven't used any other brush. If it's a loose ended brush, like maybe one of these ones, it would be like more closely fitted. But apart from that, that's what I've gone and done. So I've used my Over Decay Naked Concealer in the shade Light Medium, Light Neutral, sorry. And then I've also taken my Real Techniques, a color correcting brush, and I've just gone over and lightly rubbed, or lightly tapped all that product into my lid just to create a base. Um, you guys can choose whether or not you want to set your eye base or if you want to um, leave it wet. What I usually like to do is I like to dust it over with a little bit of white powder or translucent powder. Any one of them work well. Um, only because you're not applying a harsh color to your lid and then it stays there in that one certain area and then it just looks really harsh. So the palette that I'm going to be using today, this is the first reaction palette as well, as I've never used this, is a Morph palette and this is in the Bronzed Mocha 25B. So I'm going to go ahead and these are all the shades on the front, if I get this right. I'm going to take the Shy shade and I'm just going to use my Y11 Morph brush and this is from the Gilded set and I'm just going to lightly tap that into the eyeshadow and I'm going to apply that all over my lid. doesn't have to be perfect just as long as the cream is set so that you can build upon that with any other color that you've wanted. Okay so once that is done I'm literally just winging everything right now. I want to kind of do more of a pink look today so I've done a red look, I've done a green look, or if you can even call that green, maybe like a turquoise. I've done a kind of purple look, and I've also done an orange look, which I haven't actually uploaded yet. 
but today I want to focus on more of the pink side of things so I'm gonna be taking a morph brush and this is just an eyeshadow brush it's actually similar to my MAC 217 brush just a bit bigger and a bit wider so Morph sells these online and they don't have any numbers or anything like that but I do know that they work well for me so I'm gonna go ahead and try that so the first color that I'm gonna go in with is speechless which is in the type the type so it's speechless which is right there and I'm gonna use that to shade the outside of my eye so I usually like to do this because it kind of gives a transition color and I like to take that product out towards the end of my brow tail and just lightly in a half circle motion blend that color out but I'm basically just taking the color speechless and swiping it just across my actual lid using up as much space as I possibly can but staying underneath my brow bone now this is a good application brush for eyeshadows as well as a good blending brush it does enough justice in blending the color when you've added a little bit too much but it doesn't actually completely blend so what I'm gonna do so I'm going to be taking my Sigma Tapered Blending E35 brush and I've actually been using this ever since I got back from Mario, so I'm from Sydney. And I'm just going to circularly apply the brush to the shadow just to blend it outwards right to the end of my brow bone or my brow tail. So I'm going to try and not use my mirror so much so that it discolors the video. But the only time that I will need my mirror and the best advice that I can give you for cut creases is a magnified mirror, which is great for the Fenty Beauty one that I have. It just makes it so much easier to precise your cut crease. If you're trying to apply the concealer or whatever you have used to apply for the cut crease, it does tend to get a little bit hard when the mirror is far away because you can't actually correct the little bumps that you've made which is why I really love using the Fenty mirror. Not that I have anything against the last mirror I had because that was a gift from a really good friend, Sinead. And it did do so much justice for me for such a long time. Just, yeah, rip to that mirror. It's, it's still safely here, I just won't, I don't use it as much anymore. Anyways, what I've done is I've also blended this speechless color right in the areas that people actually hate to blend eyeshadows into. And what this does for me is it actually accentuates my eye and it kind of gives it the appearance that my eyelids are a bit wider than what they are. Uh, that's another thing with cut creases, uh, it gives an illusion that your lid kind of like is bigger than what it actually is and that's what I love about makeup. The fact that you can change things and define things as long as it's in that like limit of your face everything is, a is like a-okay. I'm gonna continue blending that out. Now what I want to leave is a lot of color just above my lid but it's slightly transitioning out into the lighter concealer just underneath my brow. I'm gonna do that to the other side. Oh, I have an issue doing the left side of my face. I don't know if anybody else has that issue but I have such an issue with the left side of my face. The right side is always perfect, but my left side is like always difficult and hard. Some really other good advice from me would be to make sure the lighter colors go out on the edges and then slowly darken the colors as you go along, the eye transitioning to the eyeshadow. The last thing you want is to put a dark color on the outside and then try and put a light color on the inside and it just doesn't work because you've officially drowned the light color with some darkness. So I'm going to be using the same brush by Morph that we used to apply the speechless shade. And the shade that I'm going to be using is the Quake shade. So it's just above the other shade that I'm going to be using, which is this one right here. So I'm going to apply that to the exact same spot that I did with this speechless color. Only this time I'm going to keep it just on that color that has harshly been put there speechless and only drag it out horizontally and not vertically this time now what I'm what I'm also going to do is I'm going to keep adding layers to make this color darker because when I put the cut crease on I want to kind of give the cut crease an illusion that it's that it has a aura so at the moment I've just applied that quake color to the speechless color but I've only kept it to this part of my eye which is just above my lid, but underneath the brow bone, completely underneath the brow bone. 
So I would say right in the center of my eyelid. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a domed head brush, and this one's by Morph again. And I'm gonna dip it into the same shade, only this time I'm going to repeat the same technique that I just did and keep that just in the center of the last application of the eyeshadow that I've just done. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of make a smile or a sad face right in the center of both colors and then slowly blend that out into the shade that we've just applied. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the next color, which is Thief, which is the color right underneath Koi. I know it's more of like a maroon red, but any kind of pink for me is a pink. So I'm gonna take the dome shade brush and I'm gonna apply just a little bit and tap it this time because the color is very dark. And I'm going to create just underneath the main lines that I've done with the Quake shade, just darkening that and making it appear more so. I oh, don't even know how to explain something sometimes. This time what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring this colour into the outer corner of my lid, just so that there's a dark colour there, and then blend this colour out after I've applied it to the other eye. Now what I'm going to do before I move on it is I'm going to check that both sides are even, which to me they aren't. I'm just going to lightly blend those out. We'll try to maintain the darkness of the last color that we used to its own section of my eyelid. So after those colors have been blended out, the next thing that I'm gonna go in with is my concealer for the cut crease. And the brush that I like to use also has no number, so I really apologize for that, but it is my favorite, favorite brush to do cut creases and using concealer. So this is my flat tip small head concealer brush, and it's the best that I find that helps me do, do concealer. Now I am going to say that I'm not going to use the Urban Decay concealer to create my cut crease only because I find that when there's more of a product on my hand it's easier for me to use and I feel like and I would say that the Too Faced Born This Way Conceal Contour Highlight and Retouch Concealer does that amazingly for me. So I'm going to apply this thick wand to the back of my hand and just really get heaps of product on my hand to dip the brush into like so and what you can do is you can coat the brush first and this is how I always do my cut creases lately and recently and just how things have been working out for me so that there's no jagged edges of the brush so it's just straight no stringy areas nothing to create a line and make you frustrated when doing a cut crease because I can do that too and it's believe me it's frustrating as and then what you're gonna do is you're going to apply just a little splodge of concealer right to the lid of your eye. And I always do this just to find out where my, can, where my cut crease can go. And then you're gonna look up, look around a bit, I usually do that. And then look back down. Now what I found is my cut crease for the illusion cut crease can go right up to where it's stopped. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be taking my Fenty Beauty Mirror and I'm just gonna be using the magnified side in applying my cut crease. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to skip it a bit. I'm not gonna detail the cut crease because for me, I'm still learning how to talk while doing a cut crease at all. Um, I take a lot of precision time and care into my cut crease into all my cut crease looks and I try and perfect as much as I can to do with the look. So what I will tell you guys now is that I'm going to start right above the inner corner of my eye, so my epicanthus, and then I'm going to drag the product halfway and stop and then just blend all the concealer out until there's completely no sign of any of my inner corner eye or the color and it feels like it's got a smooth transition to the outer edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and just Flatten my concealer brush, add a little bit of product to the beginning of the brush and then go ahead and apply my cut crease. Yeah, so I finished my cut crease. The only issue I had was I did finish one side and I was like, oh my gosh, that looks perfect. And then I looked at the other side and one actually seemed bigger than the other. So I always have to even it out. Unfortunately, if one of them is bigger than the other, no matter how perfect the other side is, you always have to match them. But the next thing that I'm gonna be using is my MAC 195 brush. And this has the orange tip, and this is perfect for applying any kind of color to like, it's a concealer brush, it applies 
just it's, it's really really well so I'm gonna be using the shade sparkle which is this color right here and for that I'm gonna be setting the base of the cut crease so I'm gonna dip my brush into that shade there give a little bit of a swirl to get some excess product on there more powder on the eye to set it the better it stays and I've always liked that so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tap the shade on to the lid and it takes some time to set wet concealer so bear with the process if you are either following along or if you want to do this look right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do after I've set that is I'm actually gonna go in and use the brush that I use the concealer for or with and I'm gonna take my Too Faced glitter glue applying some of this to the same part of my hand where I apply the concealer just a splodge and then I'm gonna mix it around with the same brush that I use the concealer with after giving it a little bit of a wipe, there's way too much concealer on that. Then what I'm going to do, and this also takes more precision, is I'm going to outline the line of the concealer with the glue to apply some of my BYS Glitter Eye Cream. And this is in the shade Cherry Bloom 13. And then I'm just going to lightly dab the glitter sparkles onto my glue that I've applied to my lid. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking my MAC 195 brush again. And then I'm going to be dipping it into the, I'm, oh, the Speechless shade again. Tapping that off and then just tapping the edges of the concealer. So what this is going to do is it's going to give it a little bit of a shade so that it's not just all one colour. Kind of gives it an effect that it's a transition or that it's transitioning. But what this does is basically ties the whole look together so that it doesn't just look like a whole splotch of foil pink. Alright and then I'm going to be taking the Quake colour which is the next pink that we used. Just going to apply that to the outer edges of where the concealer officially stops and where we've also made the speechless color stop. And this is dark enough to get rid of any concealer that you can see so that it basically makes the cut crease and the edges of the splotches disappear. So the eyeliner that I'm going to be taking to do my winged liner is the NYX Epic Liner and this is just in the color black. What I like to do is I like to draw little lines right where the ends of my eyes are and then just flick them outwards and then connect everything in a diagonal kind of line and then just colour everything in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to apply my mascara and lashes and then do the rest of my face. The mascara that I'll be taking today is the Ultra Black Hourglass Mascara and I love this mascara. This is my favourite mascara at the moment. It would have been better than sex if I never actually saw this or tried this but because I got it in the Mario bag I was like this is my new favourite and I love it and I've been using it ever since. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this to my lashes and what I do first is I always start with the centre lashes transitioning right into the inner corners of my lashes and then fulfilling the outside. I find that this doesn't flake. I also find that this mascara is very dark. The brush is perfect for your inner lashes and for also your bottom lashes when you're trying to get right in the corner of doing a mascara and it also applies the product evenly to your eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and apply my lashes and then I'll be right back to finish up this tutorial and then I will see you guys in my next video. So Okay, so I'm finally back and I've finished my face. Unfortunately, I'm not going to show you guys that I did my face because my eyes legitimately took an hour and a half to do. Um, that is without even fast tracking or cutting anything out. So I wanted to keep my face separate. But if you guys are wanting to know how I do my face and like what I used on my face to make it look this amazingly clear, definitely either comment or message me or comment on my photos on Instagram and I can definitely put up a face tutorial for you guys. Um, but on the end of this video, I'm just going to run through what I did with underneath my eyes and what I'm going to be doing with the color of my lips. So basically I used the Morph palette again 
on my eyes and for the waterline I actually used my MAC 195 brush and I first went in with this color right here and if I'm correct that color is either Quake or Thief and then I shaded it underneath my eyes with Speechless and then the last color I went in with was Thief. So Quake was for the waterline, Thief was for the darker outline for the aura of the eyes and then for the top part where I blended everything I used my eyes to make it coordinate with my eye look on the top is the color Speechless from the Morph palette. So that there is the Morph palette in Mocha bronzed mocha and that is 25B. So the last thing that I'm going to go ahead with is so my Fenty Beauty Stunner Lip Paint and this is in the shade Uncuffed so it's like I said we're sticking to a kind of pink vibe. I think that's kind of a little bit too pink for me. Um, I love my kind of nude pink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Morph palette again. And I'm going to go in with the shade Sparkle and just take my E35 brush and give it a light dust over my lips. I'm going to make sure they're dry first. Anyways guys, that is officially the end of this tutorial. So this was basically an eye tutorial and um kind of like tying that in with my lips but I hope that you guys enjoyed it I hope that I detailed it enough for you guys and if you liked it like subscribe and share and I will see you guys in my next video I hope you guys have an amazing day bye